My friends, I am here at Tractor Supply uh, getting my weekly feed for all the animals over at Longhorn Lusters. But I'm gonna tell you something. This week, we're going to up our game. We're gonna do something that's gonna really up our game. And um, I'm nervous. I'm nervous about it. I'll tell you why. I think that you all would agree that things are going real good right now with the Longhorn and uh, the regiment. We got our horses on. Uh, goats are doing great. And for the most part, no complaints whatsoever. But when I say up our game, I'm going to look into a way to avoid all of this. I'm going to tell you how. Give me a minute. Jamie has run across a feed store here in the town of Livingston that has them buggies. And if you can find the right mixture of feeds that they can fill up them buggies, we could set ourselves up just like some of the big farms and no longer have to come by and do this. Instead, just drive my buggy in and they fill it with all the grains that I need. I'll tell you more about it, hold on. Now, please don't get me wrong. I am not so spoiled that I can't drive once a week and try to supply and pick up what I need. Believe it or not, I'd probably come in here once a week anyway, just to look around, because I love to look at stuff like this. I love to walk around and look at stuff. You know, I like to dream. But I am trying to find a way to make the farm more efficient. And I'm gonna tell you something that's gonna be kind of embarrassing, but you know what? I've learned that from LE. As many times as you guys have given me ideas of what this farm does and what that farm does, I've been hard-headed. I have been hard-headed and tried to say, you know what, I'll do it the way I wanna do it. And the whole time, you guys have been right. The whole time, a lot of what y'all have said has been right. There are easier ways, more efficient ways, ways that real, I'm gonna say real, ranchers and farmers have been doing things for a while. Very smart people, a lot smarter than me, has figured it all out. I'm gonna swing by and show you something real fast and you bear with me. All right, so this here is the old downtown Livingston, the old downtown. The place I just pulled out of is the new downtown. But here in the old downtown, they have this place right here. Now guys, I'm gonna try to find me a place to pull in here and I wanna show you something. Jamie has made a video about this particular feed store recently. And what we're looking at is that thing. No, that's not it right there. There's something similar to that right over there. It's a buggy that you pull behind your tractor, your, or I'm sorry, behind your truck. And what you do is you pull in here and they fill it up for you with a special kind of feeds that all of your animals can, you know, gather their nutrition by. They have a couple of these here, but I believe these here, the animals come by and eat right out of. I think the sides of these open up. You can see the little roof mechanism there. Let's walk over. All right, so the way this works is pretty simple. This is the contraption right over here where all of the grains pour from. And so you take your trailer, like that one there, you back it up into this slot, and then this over here is how they fill it. A lot of you guys who know about granaries and stuff from around other parts of the country know all about this kind of stuff. But that little bag right there fills this to capacity, and then I'm guessing they charge you by weight. And so, so that's the system we're looking at. Let's go check out the little trailer. Now, I don't know for a fact how this works, but what I believe, oh, they got several parked over here. They got several of these over here. So what I believe is you pull up this attached to your truck, even though that's not a truck attachment right there, that does not attach to a truck. And they fill this thing up for you 
And I'm guessing there must be some way that these over here will open and your animals come up and eat right out of here on both sides. Let's walk over and check out these and see if they're any different. All right, so unfortunately, those are the exact same thing. I don't understand this hitching system. Uh, that hitches, that would hitch to a tractor, but that's not the kind of hitch that goes onto a truck. That doesn't go over a ball. So I don't really understand the idea behind it. Look here, here's one that's opened. And so as you open it up, you can open it to whatever level you want to. The feed f grains fall down and the animals come by it. Well, look at you. Are you the watchdog here? Are you the watchdog here? That's cute. Uh, it looks a lot like Billy Bob. So the grains all fall down through there and it kind of feeds down as the animals need it. But it doesn't hook up to a truck. I don't understand that system right there. That's not a truck hitch. I really wish there was someone who could talk me through this. I know what y'all are gonna say. Lester, you need to call Daniel. Arms family, he'll know. Daniel uses his truck. I've seen him use his truck. I don't know how that would hook up. I could just keep feeding out of the bags. That's not a problem. But why would someone wanna feed out of the bags if there could be an easier way? Now I know for a fact that a lot of molasses based grains will not feed down through there the way you would want them to. And you wouldn't want to have your cows access to molasses based grains 24 seven anyway. So there has to be a system where you would pull that out into your pasture and then pull it back in or, or close down the doors when you think they've had enough to eat. I don't really know. I, this is the thing where you don't know what you don't know. I bet a lot of y'all know what I'm talking about. I just, I don't, I don't. I'm gonna walk in here and ask someone for some help. Here's a kid over here I might could ask. Well, I'm a little bit let down because that right there is in fact not what I would need. Um, that's, not what I would need, darn it. Because those are the kind of things you put in there more like a mineral type stuff that animals eat as they need it, not stuff they're going to fill up on. Uh, so that's not what I'm looking for. So what they do with those is the fellow was telling me that they have a forklift and they have these huge bags of minerals that they lift up and they just pretty much slice the bottom of the bag, which fills up the trailer there. They park that they literally drive and park those out on these ranches and they open the door up so far where the minerals can feed down and the animals come up and get the minerals they need as they need them. But animals would not eat minerals until they're full. So the, the device that I'm talking about is not that right over there. <sighs> Great. So in the meantime, Lester will continue to do this over here. It's just once a week. It gives me a good workout. Uh, now that I have Ellie and Megan doing the same thing for the other property, I'll be fine. But man, I was just thinking I could make it big time. I was just thinking to myself that Lester could just take this to a whole new level. Well, I hated to leave uh, us on a sore note. This is an old lumber yard here down the road from Longhorn Lester's. We're just a few miles down the road. And it's no McCoy's. This is no McCoy's, all right? And I'm not trying to put anybody down, but I do need a couple of two by sixes and I don't want to have to drive all the way into town to get them. So I'm thinking, how bad could it be? The guy says, I don't really know where I'm going. He says, go down to the past the warehouse, make a right and someone will come out and meet me. And I'm looking for someone to come out and meet me. I don't see anybody. I see a, I see a truck way over yonder. Oh, here comes, well, there's all the workers there taking a break. Now this is probably the guys who need to come meet me. Here comes the guy to meet me right there. Okay, let me get off my phone. I don't want to embarrass the fella. But uh, they're having lunch is what they're doing. <sighs> Let me tell you how God blesses you. That's not it, that's minor. Let me tell you how God just blessed me. 
So I pull up and when the fellows come over, I gave them my list. I says, I need 10 of these two by sixes. We're doing a project today. I need this some two by sixes. I need 10 of them. I give the guy my ticket and I gave him a tip. I always tip of, I call it paying a blessing forward. He walks me over to where, I need to, I, need, I feel like I just need to suck that. Not in a vampirish way, but because I'm bleeding and my body just says, put my mouth over it. I know that sounds weird to y'all. Bottom line is, we drive over to where the 10 foot two by sixes are at, and they're ugly. They're ugly. They're out in the weather. Even though it's treated, listen, they're, they're the bottom of the pile. They're the ones that are cracked, and they just, they're, they're not going to look right. They're discolored, and they're not going to look right in Jamie's new greenhouse. And I tell the guy, I says, these are these, I says, go get another stack. Go get the forklift and bring another stack. He goes, we don't have any more. We don't have any more. And I says, well, listen, I says, I can't use those. I says, I, I can't use them. Would you believe that a red truck drives up who's the boss of the company? He's just out making rounds. He sees us having a discussion. And when he pulls up, the fellas tell him in Spanish that he doesn't like these because for whatever reason. And the guy goes, well, give him 14s. Give him 14 footers for the same price. I don't need 14 footers, I needed 10 footers. And I ended up getting 10 14 footers, but a whole lot nicer lumber. And I thought to myself, I'm so glad that man was there because otherwise I would have had to come back over here, get my money back. And that would have been kind of a pain in the butt. Had to drive somewhere else for my materials and then whenever I was leaving, the fellow who I gave the tip to, he says, may God bless you. It was in Spanish. He goes, may God bless you. And he kind of held up his, his tip. I says, hey, I got 14 footers for the price of 12 footers and it's good looking materials. I says, God's already blessed me. <laughs> God's already blessed me. <laughs> that's the way life works, y'all. You pay your blessings forward, and I promise you, they'll come back. They'll come back to you a hundred times. That's not why you pay it forward, though. You do the right thing. And look how God blessed me today. I got to put on my seatbelt. I know I'm not the only one that does that. I know I'm not the only one out there that does that. Uh -oh. So as promised, I'm doing something a little bit different tonight than in past nights. I'm going to go ahead and close my horses in so they can't come over and bother the cows. And then I'll walk around the backside of the cows. I'm going to give them plenty of time to eat first, though. I am going to give all the cows plenty of time to eat. Baby. Uh, well, so I do have four stalls, one, two, three, and then there's fours, one on the end over there. I'm going to let all the cows get up into their stalls. And, uh, what I like about this is I go back behind them and close the gates. Horses cannot come in and bother them. And whenever they're done eating, they're going to walk right here where I just now came and get a nice dousing of fly treatment. Notice how Tex has gone all the way inside his stall. He feels a whole lot more comfortable uh, with going inside the barn whenever the horses are put away. Uh, you can also see that Marilyn here is all the way up inside her stall. Uh, I don't want to talk about these two. They've not really figured out what's what. Uh, Santana was doing fine in stall number one. And for some reason, she just wanted to pick on Jezebel. Yeah, so Jezebel finds herself at the bottom of the pecking order when it comes to our four longhorns. Well, five if you count little one right there. Uh, Santana, go back to the stall where you were at. No, that's, that's, you're not going to take any food away from him. Charlene might be the smartest longhorn we got. 
She might be the smartest longhorn we got. She's like, it's over here, mama. If you just listen to me, I know where it's at. So I want you to notice how the flies are bothering them. Look at all the tails are swishing. When you see tails swishing around like that, you know there's a problem. And so they definitely need a fly treatment tonight, this afternoon. And so now that they're all inside the stalls, I'll walk by and close all the gates. I'm gonna give them a little bit more time to eat first though. I'll close the gates right before they finish. Uh, reason being is once I close the gates and close them in, they're gonna start getting a little bit nervous. And when they start getting nervous, they start, you know, they're gonna stop eating and go ahead and make their way out of the stall. So I'm so proud of them though. All my cows, even Charlene right there, the little munchkin, couple months old is already up in there showing mama how to eat it and what to do. Horses over on their side, and we have a really neat system here. We do, it's just a great system. And there comes our white kitty. She likes to help out. Yeah, she helps out with the longhorns. All right, Santana just walked out. I went ahead and closed all my gates. Uh, today we're even gonna let Tex run through the gauntlet. I wanna call it the gauntlet. It's not a gauntlet at all. Santana was the first one to come on through. Tex is a, uh, now he may start being a bully here to the other cows that are still eating. And that's not really what I wanted to see. Uh, I don't like that. Uh, I'm gonna open this red gate, let Santana walk through again. And I'm gonna probably have to let, listen y'all, it's not fail proof, okay? It's not fail proof. I need to let her out before Tex ends up sticking her. Come on, baby. See, if they're, not, if they're not scared of the stalls, and you gotta really, you've done a really good thing if you can get them to where they're not scared of the stalls. Go ahead and keep Tex in. I'm gonna get Santana back up in there. We wanna see if we can try to get Marilyn to go back in if we can. If we can get Tex to walk down that gauntlet, that would be great. He might not do it though. There we go. Let's let Tex walk through, there he goes. Look at there, look at that. That's what we wanted, just right there. Look at the fly scatter. Look at the fly scatter, that's perfect, Tex. Good. All right, we're gonna open the gates back up now. That means Santana's walked the gauntlet, so has Tex, but there's still food to be eaten. I'm not trying to scare them, y'all. Look, there's still plenty of grains to be eaten here. Isn't that kind of the funniest thing to see a white kitty walking around here as all the longhorns eat? I wonder why. Like, really, what is her purpose? What does she think her role is out here? Following me out to the barn while I feed the longhorns. Baby, what are you trying to do? What is your goal here? I just don't, I don't think she just wants to hang out with dad. I think in her mind, she has a bigger purpose here. She doesn't just doesn't know what it is yet. But she has a much greater purpose than just being a farm cat. She needs to be involved in helping feed up or something. And that's great, I love that. All right, let's go take care of our birds. Don't let your troubles fester. Come watch Longhorn Lester. <laughs> yeah, something like that.